in today's video we'll discuss about the cracking and fluidized catalytic cracking cracking if we go with the word meaning it is one whole piece when broken it breaks into small pieces same is the definition of cracking when a large molecular weight compound is broken either by high temperature and pressure or by the activity of catalyst it breaks into simpler molecules so today we will learn about cracking and its types and fluidized catalytic cracking in detail as i have described cracking the definition is written here that is the decomposition of higher molecular weight hydrocarbon into simpler or low molecular weight hydrocarbons either by high temperature and pressure or by the catalytic activity and with the help of reaction you can see here that a large molecule c10 h22 that is decane can be cracked into small pieces of pentene uh, olefin and normal pentane that is how the high molecular weight a large molecule is broken into small pieces now this is called cracking so from the definition we can understand that cracking is of two types thermal cracking which is brought about at high temperature and pressure and catalytic cracking so thermal cracking can again be divided into two types liquid phase thermal cracking and vapor phase thermal cracking whereas the catalytic cracking is of two types fixed bed catalytic cracking and fluidized catalytic cracking that is fcc or moving bed catalytic cracking so why we call it fixed bed or moving bed or fluidized bed because the catalyst after it getting exhausted is taken into the regeneration tower therefore we move the catalyst from the reaction tower to the regeneration tower therefore it is called fluidized catalytic cracking or moving bed catalytic cracking whereas in the fixed bed catalytic cracking the catalyst is not moved from one tower to other so now in this we will be learning in detail about the fcc that is fluidized catalytic cracking this is the diagram so here you can see there are two towers one is maintained at 600 degrees the other one is maintained at 500 degrees and there is an an iron retort containing the feed oil so in the iron retort the feed oil is taken and it is heated up to 400 degrees and then from the uh, from the retort the feed oil is pushed into the reactor which is maintained at 500 degrees containing the catalyst in finely grind state now in the reactor tower the temperature is 500 degrees the catalyst is there so the molecular weight of high higher molecular weight hydrocarbons they get cracked this tower is fitted with a cyclone at the top this cyclone actually helps in retaining the solid particles and allows only the cracked vapors to go into the pipe so from the reactor the cracked vapors after the molecular weight higher molecular weight hydrocarbons are cracked they are the vapors are led into the fractionating tower using a pipe now this fractionating power, tower works on the principle of difference in the boiling points the higher boiling point liquids they will be left behind and the lower boiling point liquids will rise up in the tower and this light fraction is then taken into the cooler or the condenser whereas the lower fractions which are having a high boiling point will be taken out from the fractionating column as the heavy oil and are led back into the iron retort as the feed oil now this light fraction which goes into the cooler is condensed and then it is led to the stabilizer to remove the uncondensed gases from it and now the stabilized li liquid which is obtained 
is having almost the same composition and this is the gasoline or petrol. When this process is going on, the catalyst gets exhausted because of the deposition of carbon particles on the surface of the catalyst. And now we have to reactivate this catalyst. So to do this, we have to take this catalyst into the regenerated tower, regeneration tower. So to do this, we take it out from the bottom pipe and force it into the regenerator tower using a blast of air from the uh, air and with the help of air and the catalyst which is now exhausted it gets burnt because the carbon which gets deposited on the catalyst it gets burnt as carbon dioxide and it leaves the regenerator tower from the top as flue gases. These flue gases can be used as fuel. It is also provided with a cyclone. So it does not allow the catalyst to go into the along with the flue gases. Only the carbon dioxide is removed and the catalyst is held back. Now this regenerated catalyst is taken from the bottom pipe and along with the feed oil, it is pushed back into the reactor tower. So this is how the fluidized catalytic cracking works. I have already explained the working that the hot vapors with the iron retort is moved to the reactor containing the zeolite as the catalyst in the grinded state. The vapors which are cracked and are pushed with the help of the pipe fitted with the cyclone which does not allow the carbon particles to go with the crack vapors into the fractionating column. The uncondensed gases are led through the cooler and then through the stabilizer. The high molecular weight liquid with a high boiling point is taken from the fractionating column and is taken back to the iron retort for further cracking. The exhausted catalyst is then led into the regenerator. So regeneration of catalyst in this process is very important. The catalyst is recycled again and again and the regeneration tower is maintained at a little higher temperature compared to the reactor tower. So regeneration is done at 600 degrees centigrade and I have already explained that it is also fitted with a cyclone at the top and a standpipe at the bottom. So this is how the regeneration of the catalyst can be done and the catalytic cracking works. It's a very important process because we have to prepare the, manufacture the or synthesize the petrol because the straight run gasoline is just not enough for day-to-day -day use. The straight run gasoline is the gasoline which we obtain from the crude oil. But this gasoline we are synthesizing using the heavy oil which is the most bulky fraction obtained from the crude oil. So cracking is very very important to run our machineries, automobiles. Thank you.